Hello, how are you doing today? Hi, Oakley. Hey, Omar, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, and good to see some familiar faces and some new ones. Hi, and for thank you for joining us today. Um, today is an exciting one where we really are going to just be opening it up um, to you uh, and really in the sort of spirit of Dear Abby, you know, like, can we uh, evoke that experience of just connecting with each other um, in real time? And, and I love that it's really coming from a place of questions. Um, but before we jump into that, um, I think the homework that we shared last week was just thinking about a story that you want to reframe for yourself. Um, and so if anybody um, had a chance to sort of think about that, um, we invite you to share, uh, to access your mic or uh, share in the chat um, a story. And just as you're maybe thinking of what that was, I thought we'd also do uh, a fun check-in um, today. I was thinking, what three words are you feeling right now? So if you just sort of took a beat, most people always do one, but I, sometimes it's like you're feeling multiple things. Um, and so if there are three words that you're feeling right now, I invite you to share them in the chat um, or go ahead and access your mic. How about you, Oakley? What three words might you be feeling right now? I am feeling, I'm going to be really honest, okay? Because why would I be otherwise? <laughs> Especially after last week. Why would I be anything but honest? Um, I don't really care about the things with beating hearts. So all those things that people are I saying. Feel, um, I feel slightly distracted had a huge day with clients like huge my phone's still blowing up so i'm adjusting you know like doing that and i feel physically really hot my house feels so <laughs> warm and i also feel wow i didn't even see this one coming i feel really grateful to be here i'm just happy to see all these faces and i'm like dropping in and it just yeah this is good awesome and I love that Brian, happy, encouraged, thankful. Mm, love that. Nagar, if I'm getting your name right, uh, stressed, joint pain, trapped. Oof. We got all the feelings here. Um, all right, Tricia. Yeah, I'll share. Um, I'm feeling excited, joyful, anticipation. One more. And bonus round. Yeah, bonus round. Da, 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 da. Encouraged. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mary, what so. about you, Mary Muir? I think um, tired, grateful, and connected. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You guys are all bringing me into the fold right now. This is so good. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> Happy place. Happy place. Linda, Jennifer, and then there's somebody at iPhone. So if you'd like to um, share, maybe as you're thinking about your words, all um, mine are, my three words are going to be energy, high, and low. So it's, I've been feeling the massive extremes of energy um, the last five days. And I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I was like, this is just from literally this weekend, not feeling like I could move so much so that my wife was like, go get a COVID test. And so fortunately I got the test back yesterday, I came back negative. And then my energy just sort of swung in the total opposite direction where like, not going to sleep till four or five in the morning. So from not being able to move to then just like high energy, and I'm like, this is amazing. I'm not sure what to uh, think about it. And so I'm not trying to think about it. I'm just sort of being in it. 
Um, Jen, exhausted, anxious, hopeful. I love that. This is what this is the beauty of three words. I've never done a three word check in. And it really, I think, shows the level of things that we can feel all at once. Uh, and I think that's the sort of fun, scary, wild things about emotions is just how many we can feel in any given moment and how from moment to moment uh, they can just pop in and pop out in so many different ways. Um, and so how we kind of stay in that pocket. So as folks um, have checked in, is anybody and on now, is anybody uh, have any reflections from this past week on naming something that they would want to reframe in their life? You know, and, and it could be um, something specific, uh, a memory, a moment. Or a place where you feel like you want to, but don't know how to reframe it too. Is that what we're yep. adding that? Yeah. I think it's fascinating and I'll just keep going until somebody raises their hand. Um, ooh. ooh, Brian, my health and future legacy. I love that. That's a sort of balance of being both in the present and thinking about what's ahead. Um, you know, one that's been interesting for me is having this tinnitus in my ear since the beginning of COVID. And I, you know, I just sort of did sort of some preliminary research on it and it seems psychosomatic and sort of related to stress, which given with COVID, not surprising. Um, but then somebody told me like, well, it's actually your spiritual energy adjusting to a new atmosphere. And I love that perspective. That sounds way cooler than some psychosomatic issue, right? Like, cause you know, when you're in an airplane and you know, you change sort of atmospheres, you gotta like pop your nose to sort of adjust to the new altitude. And I was like, huh, my tinnitus is just my spiritual being moving on a whole new plane. I was like, that sounds cool. I don't know if it's real or not, but I'm gonna go with that answer as my reframe. Tinnitus, yeah. <laughs> as you're going higher and higher yeah, that's right i'm like oh man i have gone to places that i haven't even reached an airplane i mean how cool is that you know um so that's a good example of a reframe and then i want to come back to brian's mm -hmm. um health and future legacy so have you reframed your journey of your health brian in or like tell us about the reframe or if you're stuck on the reframe um, yeah, I mean, I've changed my overall thinking of, of how to look at it. I mean, I, I came from a family that didn't really push that on me. And my mom was really, really in poor health as far as obesity and just the kind of the teaching of how to properly eat and take care of myself. And so actually with your help, you know, a little while back, I've been able to see a lot more clearly on that that doesn't necessarily need that doesn't need to be my future and my um, the story that I'm going to live. I can change that, and I can actually change how I live my life going forward and how my family lives their life going forward that way. So I'm trying to reframe the way. I, I guess before I used to look at it as I was already destined to not uh, have like, you know, a fit body or a fit mind. And, and I think that that's where I needed to just change how I see that looking, looking forward and how I, how I treat myself going forward. So that's my biggest challenge. I think right now is just adopting that mentality that, that, that doesn't need to be my outcome necessarily. Thank you so much for that, Brian. That was, uh, that's amazing. I think we can all relate to you on some level of like physical health, mental health, emotional health in our family system, right? Where we're like, hey, I need to rewrite the book here. Otherwise, you know, my future looks pretty destined. Um, <clears throat> oh, I keep blowing a fuse. Talk about spiritual energy. This is the first time I've done this. <laughs> or something's dying. I don't know. Um, so what is it? Leave it? So the point being there is that um, Brian, like I would take that 
the history there, right? And it's, and and the reframe could be like that was the perspective I got. That was the education I got around what occurs if I make these choices. What a, what an incredible education to receive, right? Like up close and personal, an education around the absolute future outcome if certain choices are made day in and day out. And so now you have this amazingly powerful, you know, experience, right? Like I, I have similar to that, you know, if I make these choices day in and day out, my absolute outcome will be X, like I will be miserable, right? I have um, a dear cousin of mine and she was married to a very influential man in Washington, DC. And she was also played in that realm. <clears throat> she had a big job there, still does. And she was home one night and she was drinking a glass of wine and she thought to herself, if I continue with the thoughts that my mother taught me to think, which I'm thinking right now, like this moment of clarity in her life, and I keep drinking this, in 10 years, I will be a miserable alcoholic and I will ruin this marriage. Like in the kitchen on a Thursday night, you know what I mean? And she was like, okay, got it. Thank you for the education. And she reframed it as like this, this moment of clarity of her life, of the action she's taken. And she's fundamentally changed her life and just got a ridiculous promotion. And I can say that America is safe. But <laughs> so I just love it. Thank you for sharing that. Can anyone else relate to that here? Yeah, Trish. I can. I, um, I live with an alcoholic and um, it runs in, in, in the family. Mm -hmm. And it just, I've watched, uh, I don't know, it's, it, the whole bug time, this whole, corn time and quarter of time flash in the pan a blink of an eye this moment will be gone and in most people's guts in history it will have gone down into the depths of the deep despair but not in mine but in with respect to Brian I think I feel he, he made a lot of affirmations in that statement that I am stuck in this body. I am, uh, uh, but he, he didn't reframe, it hasn't reframed it quite yet that I heard to bring it to full circle to I will heal my body. I can heal my body. You are a healthy person, Brian. You do have the ability to heal yourself. You do have the the purpose on the planet to be able to be to be here to be a teacher to be a leader you do have that in you mm -hmm. that's beautiful trisha and i you know i think one of those the question that i had going back to to brian and i you know and oakley kind of reframed this as history versus what you'd said future legacy if you were to think of a physical object as your history, what would that object be? A block. Going to Brian. Let's do it. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's all good. Ooh, that's a tough question. Uh, a physical object of my history? Yeah. So if you were to say, okay, this is his, the history that I'm thinking about from what my mother has said, and that was some kind of symbol. What would that symbol be? Um, maybe it might sound a bit weird, but it was it's her arm, her chair that she sat in. Mm. She sat in a reclining chair for years and never got up to do things. And I think that chair was a sore spot for me when I would come home and when I'd have discussions with her. I think that that chair was always like a a symbol of her inactivity and kind of her giving up a little bit. So 
it's an incredible image of that armchair and I'm sure you could you can see the material that it was made out of and the creeks I'm sure that you were just so familiar with as it kicked back. Now as you look to that future legacy that you named what image or symbol do you see? Um I I kind of it's hard to explain but maybe the out it's not the outdoors but I see like just the sidewalk almost it's being outside being active enjoying the blue air enjoying enjoying nature enjoying my neighborhood and not being confined to that chair and what do you mean thank you so much brian for sharing because i think as we think about this reframing it's not some philosophical idea i think it is as just naming those things and so imagining that armchair becoming a sidewalk. And I love sidewalks for a couple of reasons. One, there's this beautiful poem that sidewalks are where the collision of the mundane and the miraculous happen. It's where both errands and epiphanies can happen. And so something as just simple as the side of a street is where we can go for a walk, we can hold hands, we can be in all these beautiful places on the sidewalk. And so I just thank you so much for sharing that. And I think as we think about these symbols and how we can change them in our mind, that's what reframing is. Thank you. Beautiful, I love that. Jennifer, the expectations of my father, what he believes versus what I believe. I think we can all relate to that one too, can't we? <laughs> That's a good one. <clears throat> What's the reframe there for you, Jen? Um, I think I am working on it right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's funny, Omar, when you were saying, um, you know, a physical object that kind of represents that. Immediately, I thought of, I don't know, it was probably I want to say nine years old and I was in Boston with my family and we <laughs> walked by a vendor who was selling all kinds of sweatshirts and it was I w really wanted a Harvard sweatshirt I loved how it looked I didn't know really I knew it was a college but I didn't really know much more than that and my father said to me I will get it for you but you have to promise me that's where you're going mm. and I just remember I don't think in that moment I understood that but it stuck with me and it's so kind of it's a great symbol for his beliefs and mine as far as you know his um opinion of success is you know the degree you have the amount of money you have that's the the you know that's what success is and for me I think I bought into that for a very long time and and I struggled because of it and it, it overwhelmed me it took kind of going, going, going all the time, trying to, I think, to please him. And I think that I have realized that um, those are not the important things to me. And I'm trying to reframe and relearn or unlearn what I already, you know, what's kind of in my head. And I find that just lately, um, and I think especially with everything that's been happening in 2020, really taking a step back and saying like, you know, I could be a lot happier. I could feel a lot more joy if I let go of that pressure and that belief and looking around me and asking myself like, what's the measure of success for me? Is it money? Is it, and, it, and honestly, like when I really look at it, it's not. And, um, you know, and it's just, I think it's something that it's always kind of like, I play this, I hear my dad in my head, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm 44 years old and, you know, I have ha hopefully, you know, another half of my life to go and, you know, and I want to really live in my truth and, um, and reframe those expectations. And I'm, I'm, Definitely not there, <laughs> but um, I'm working towards it. 
Mm. Omar, any thoughts? I would just, that image of the Harvard sweatshirt mm -hmm. um, is so clear. And if you were to just take a moment and close your eyes, take a breath mm -hmm. and imagine that same moment with your kids, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? I would say, let's get that sweatshirt. <laughs> it's, it looks good, it's cute. And probably no more than that. Um, and just let it be. It's, you know, something you like, let's get it. Let's embrace that, but it, it would be nothing more. And how could that advice opportunity gift that you would just give your kids can you give yourself yeah that's a little harder <laughs> um but yeah i think that why um oh yeah omar um you're pushing hmm um why is that hard i think because i um i think because i am such a daddy's girl and um my connection to my dad you know our relationship i've always felt like that love comes from how proud he is of me and um and i i realized you know yes that is important to me but you know i do often think of myself as that little girl and wishing i had you know a voice to say like i don't have to go there i can go wherever i want um and now um, trying to, I, I realize that, you know, I have to be proud of me, nobody else. Um, and I have to do what is, you know, feels right to me and, and follow my intuition of all of that and cut myself a little slack sometimes. A lot of times, but yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one of the, I'm going to key on in on one word that you said, which is pride. Gratitude and pride are pro-social emotions, which means that they activate both internally, but also externally. And so just as you know, with our added, our gratitude app, G thanks, we can practice gratitude. We can practice giving thanks by ourselves and we can actually practice it by giving it to others. And so it, I invite you to think about just as we can practice gratitude, what would it mean to practice pride in a pro-social way? Where can I, just like I can give thanks for something today, where can I be proud today? And where can I be proud of someone else today? And that's, you know, these are the sort of power of these particular two emotions unlike a lot of like joy or happiness those are can be very individualistic but those two are relational um and 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 so thinking about something each day that you can take pride in and give pride for we actually have a trained psychologist though with us so that was just me <laughs> i'm gonna give you my schedule on thursday can you just i think my Clients are going to love you. Honestly. That's awesome. <laughs> now, invite them to the show. I will. I'll be like, guys, session's canceled. You're coming at four o'clock. <laughs> um, wow. I'm just sitting with sort of the profundity that just went down. I'm like, Omar, that is really beautiful to practice pride consciously because we're really, we don't give ourselves permission to be pride, prideful. Mm. You know, that's like bad, right? Like, you don't want to be too proud, but God, how important is that? It like brings tears to my eyes to think about combing through a day and stopping and saying like, wow, I'm really proud of myself for accomplishing what I did today. You know, like for, for example, I'm working with this amazing young 20 something and we're really, really digging into some family system stuff. 
and it's not isolated. I'm getting emails from other members of the family. I'm like, I'm sort of working overtime, which is a very tricky line to walk as a therapist when you have an individual client. So you can put hours in off the books with other emails and pushing other things. So I'm, I'm watching these hours tick by and I'm watching like my motive and all that, but I happen to know family systems. And so even though she's my client, I also know there's an opportunity for me to influence the family system on a certain level that's, that could create some really long lasting change. And I took a really big risk yesterday, like a really big risk. And I got an email from one of the members of the parent team. And it was um, the list of like what I should work on with their daughter. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I wrote back like, you know, you've been heard, right? Like that, like respectful. And <clears throat> told her why, told her, told mom obviously now, why certain things were going to work, why they didn't. And then I took a, then, then I, so I did my therapeutic due diligence of like explaining what was up, setting a boundary. And then I did the little extra thing that sometimes I'm inspired to do. And I wrote a really long email just from the depths of my heart, from like a professional woman to a mom who's all of her kids have left the nest. And I just wrote this email to her and I suggested a couple things that I've been seeing and I just did it from love. I'm not her therapist. And I wasn't sure what to expect because in the last 18 months, it ha there hasn't been a level of like being received. And I got an email back today that almost made me cry. I mean, there was so much gratitude and like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take these steps that you said. And she, then she just did like this afternoon. And we are talking like she is going to fundamentally shift her family structure for the rest of time and like alleviate suffering in like an enormous way. And I normally won't pause to feel proud of myself because that would feel weird. And for me to just take a moment and be like, that really took something. Like I was up late. I was stressed. I reread the email 800 times. And then I made sure I was in integrity. I trust my professionalism. I trust my insights and I push send. And here we are today with like this huge opening. So thank you for saying that, Omar, because that makes my heart like swell to take a moment and just feel like proud of that thing in myself that just wanted to do that and being like, that was cool. That was really good. Not to push my luck here, but I will. Yeah. I think part of it too, I, as you were sharing your story, I was, I, I went to my mother-in-law's house today because my daughters are there um, during the day for Zoom school and they had taken my charger for my computer. And so I, I went over there and um, brought donuts and was very excited to see both my daughters diligently doing their work in, in class. And my oldest daughter was in math and I heard the teacher calling her. And my daughter said, I don't know if this is going to be right, but this is the answer that I gave. And the teacher was like, that's right. And I told my daughter, I was like, honey, I'm proud of you for getting that right. But I'd also love for you to think about not qualifying your answer with, I don't know first. And I think, and I said, you know, as a woman, it's important to just own what you know without qualifying it. And she's like, dad, but I'm not a woman yet. And I was like, I know. <laughs> but we watched Kamala Harris and Mike Pence last night. And regardless of your politics, we heard a man interrupt the moderator 
interrupt Kamala. And Kamala actually had to pause and say, you're interrupting me. I haven't finished speaking yet. And so I just, I think how we also think about gender on this, like as a father now, Jennifer, like I'm hearing your words in a totally different way as a father. And like, I had the opposite. My father had sort of, I had no expectations of my father. Right. And I think that's also sort of an interesting thing is when there's like too much expectations and when there's not enough. Right. Um, and neither is necessarily healthy to react to. Right. It, to overly sort of subscribe to somebody's opinion or to totally disregard somebody's opinion. But either way, now I think about my daughter and the world that she's going to grow up in. What, what does that look like? And what is my responsibility as a man um, to be encouraging? So you can take a moment and feel proud of that parenting moment, Omar. Yes. But yeah, gender, you know, these things can get, you know, dicey. So I, I get that, like, I'm, I'm just putting one foot in front of the other. Um, but actually, you know what, I'll take a moment of pride. I'll practice what we're preaching in the moment here. And just, I'm grateful uh, and proud that we live in this moment where, you know, 10 strangers from across the country pause in the beat of the week to just connect and be real. And I think that's really the intention of this space. And one of the things that Oakley and I want to experiment with today is breakout rooms so that we have like a little bit smaller space um, for us to check in. Um, I have a poem that I would love to read. And I don't know if there's Oakley anything else that you want to say in advance of that. Um, okay. Let me know when you're ready. Do you want me to read the poem first or do you want to go first? Let's do this first because the poem is will like bring us into okay. this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what I really love to add for everyone today is a word that uh, changed my life. And the word is capacity. And a lot of the time we allow ourselves to get stuck in the past and we can't find a powerful reframe because we haven't set the people free who are holding responsible for our lives. So every single one of us has someone that's somewhere inside, we haven't quite let them off the hook for something that happened. And the way that we can let them off the hook is by acknowledging that that was their capacity at the time. So the belief structure, the actions, and the choices that that person made was a direct reflection of their capacity in that moment. And when we get to stand as adults and look at that person and say, that was your capacity. There's nothing to hold them accountable to after that. We get to let them off the hook because it's another way of saying they were that was the best they could do. But I actually don't really like that phrase because it's kind of like, well, who cares? I wanted them to do better, right? But if we really get that that person, whether it was mom, dad, ex-husband, ex-wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Uncle, aunt, whoever it is, teacher, said the thing that like imprinted on us or did the thing that like horrified us. If we can really go into that moment with that person and acknowledge that that was their capacity, then we can thank them for the lesson learned, right? that we have outgrown that capacity. So then acknowledge the capacity we're inside of as individuals, because when then we acknowledge, okay, that was your capacity, but whoa, my capacity is actually expanded. It's, it's bigger. I've outgrown 
your capacity. So we can't hold people accountable who don't have the same capacity as us. Right? So, you know, Jen, I'd wager to even say here that you've outgrown your father's belief system. Right? And we've all outgrown some piece of our lineage and that's on purpose because we're here to move our lineage forward. So when people from our lineage don't show up, let's let them off the hook with the acknowledgement that they are inside of their capacity and it's not the same as ours. And you don't need to judge, you just move on. I love that as a, our potential homework for the week. Who do we need to let off the hook? And like visualize it, you know? have them attached to some fish hook and then be like, nope, take that fish hook off, uh -huh. you know? Um, we'll, we'll sit on that one as the potential homework for the week. Um, so I'm gonna read this poem uh, called Working Together by David White. And I actually, I didn't plan this, but just the title itself of Working Together, cause that's, the relationships with our fathers, the relationship with our mothers, the relationships with people in our lives, partners in our homes. We're constantly working together. Listen, we shape ourself to fit this world. And by the world are shaped again, the visible and the invisible. Working together in common cause, to produce the miraculous. I'm thinking of the way the intangible air traveled at speed round a shaped wing easily holds our weight. So may we in this life trust to those elements we have yet to see or imagine and look for the true shape of our own self by forming it well to the great intangibles about us. I'm gonna drop it into the chat. How'd that Ooh. feel for you? That was so beautiful. It took me just into this place of the trust of being, you know? How about others? Anybody else? Yeah. Any words without even commentary, just like what words resonated with you? Go ahead and access your mic or share in the chat. Boom. Sasha, right there. Right on. Mm -hmm. Right on letting just acceptance. Thank you. Welcome. Any other people have words from the poem that resonated with them? Jen. Um, I think or imagine and look for the true shape of our own self by forming it well. That's just spoke to me. It's like spot on. Any other words? And again, just even looking at in the chat, words that jumped out from you from the poem. When you first said, listen, and said it firmly and directly, and I immediately went in, closed my eyes and zoomed in listening. Thank you. Denise, to produce the miraculous trust. I'm going to hold space for just a couple more. Just again, no need for even the commentary, just letting the trusting the words of the poem. And what did you feel in your heart or in your bones? Just hearing them. A 
listen. We shape ourself to fit this world. And by the world are shaped again, the visible and the invisible, working together in common cause to produce the miraculous. I'm thinking of the way the intangible air traveled at speed round a shaped wing easily holds our weight. So may we in this life trust to those elements we have yet to see or imagine and look for the true shape of our own self by forming it well to the great intangibles about us. What I love about these poems and these words is how they're so just indirect and yet somehow they hit a nerve. Just the visible and the invisible for folks who know me, two words that I absolutely love. But I just think about what is pride? Is that visible or is it invisible? Do I, do I think about is this reclining chair or what you're reacting to what was visible or is it the invisible memory of it? And yet, and this poem was actually written, it was commissioned by an airline company and it was meant to be spoken at a big sort of employee gathering. And so the whole poem really is about this. I'm thinking of the way the intangible air traveled at speed round a shaped wing easily holds our weight. And so all of a sudden this poem and this poet took all these people from stewardess to captains to mechanics to executives and just elevated their day-to-day -day job to a moment of beauty, that they are just sitting on the invisible air. And it's actually, that's what's holding them all together. Their entire industry is built on this intangible air. How crazy is that? All right, shall we try breakouts? Mm -hmm. So I think there's, I don't know, 10, 12, there's 12 of us. So six and six rooms. And I posted in the chat some questions to think about. And if we maybe just give each other like two minutes or so each for whoever wants to share, just so that for those that want to respond to the questions, and this is by invitation. So if you don't want to share, that's okay. Um, but just to give people space to share. And the three questions are, what are the experiences that challenged and changed you? Who are the people that have supported you along the way? Is this the life you imagined for yourself? Or is it time to reimagine it? And so feel free to answer one of the questions. Um, you don't have to answer all of them, just whichever one speaks for you. Sound good? And Oakley and I um, will be, one of us will be in each room. And with the magic fairy dust of Brian Vasquez and Zoom, somehow this will all magically happen. You came back. <laughs> I don't know about your group, but we had an awesome time in ours. Not to you know speak on behalf of uh, our group, but uh, you know, Mary, Denise, Nagar, um, any reflections that you'd like to share out? I thought it was um, great. Yeah, it was very positive. I'm in the very like dark negative like uh, moments and never thought about like, what's the joy in dancing with it. I've been dancing with anger, I think, more. So um, thanks for that. And I have the I Ching book. Actually, I have it in Farsi, but I've never read it. So that was so interesting. <laughs> All you need is three coins, three coins. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start this today. 
awesome. I'm telling you, like I just started a couple of weeks ago and it's every day my mind is blown by. I'm like, what? No way. This is impossible. So cool. But, you know, if it worked for Confucius and Lao Tzu, I'm like, all right, you know, I can give it a shot. Denise or Mary, any other shares? And then we'll let Oakley and her folks share too. That, uh, to to re-emphasize that joy piece, I just, you know, you're going through your day and I, I love this space and a morning meditation and just the, they are always joyful and they're often very positive and uplifting. And it's like, oh, right, I get to be joyful. Um, I was watching um, Paris Bueller's Day Off. I was screening it to see if it was appropriate for Brandon. I know, it's your movie. fave. I know, Mom. and I knew I, but I, I was ready. You know, I thought, oh, my 12 year old will dig this. He loves cars and it's all the shenanigans. And so I pre-screened it, just me. The boys have gone to bed. And then at the end, I laughed out loud and it felt so good. Cause you know, he's like, what are, what, you're still here. You know, that little bit at the very, very end, go, go home. And I laughed out loud and it was like, oh, oh wow, that felt good. Mm -hmm. And and I get to do that. It's okay to be joyful or to find joy in whatever those tiny things are. And so I love this space for that. And, and uh, the practices, just reminding myself, yes, it's okay to be happy. Mm. And, and it's important to laugh. But awesome. yeah, it takes these reminders. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Denise, I think your dog is being, being your joy maker. <laughs> this guy, yes. He's demanding I sit on the floor and give him pets right now. So yes, he brings me ridiculous joy daily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. How was your session, Oakley? I thought you guys had such a good time. We, we went deep. Um, does anyone want to share how it was for you guys in our session? Parasol, Zeus, Trish. Yeah. Um, Brian, I, I bet Brian would share, but I, I always shared a lot. So I just, um, we, we had a wonderful conversation. Everyone ha had a chance to share and e explain a bit about uh, their challenges and their adventures through life's path. And namaste, I see the light, my, the light, I see the light within you and the light in me sees the light within you. That's what I want to say to my group and to everyone here, namaste. Namaste, Trish, they were cute. And that Oakley, by the way, you've been blowing those fuses. You flipped your hand and it blew a fuse. <laughs> that fuse flipped, I watched it, you were talking and, I watched the light just change in your room. Oh, yeah. I did side note. Here. I am, I side am note. Energy. Right <laughs> energy flowing. It's total energy flowing. Oh, it's good. Um, anybody else? I gave some homework. I'll say that. Maybe we weren't like. Dead. Yeah, I got some. I got some homework. So some I'm homework. happy with that. Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. I think we kind of talked about like where to put our minds, you know, to use um, our minds to really visualize and feel our future, um, which can really help redirect where we've been. Um, and also looking at some of the things we have in our system, like in our personality structure, that also could be our superpower, you know, like that too. So, <clears throat> I always say honor it all, you know, and when it's done serving, it's done serving. That was Nagar sort of mentioned it briefly about the dancing. Um, it was, it did come out of the I Ching where it said waiting is not this passive activity. Waiting is like a farmer dancing for the rain. Mm. And so you can't control the rain, but you can dance for the rain. And so that's really sort of was the vibe um of where we were 
Um, so what was the homework? Because, you know, I think we we had posed one question earlier this week uh, or this earlier. Was, this was private homework. Oh, so I can't uh, tell. Uh, yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, sorry. We're Duly sorry. noted. Long group. <laughs> Duly noted. One tribe. Mm. Um, well, then. Uh, Each, people got individual. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, next week, everybody can go to Oakley and we can switch. <laughs> um, but uh, so this week, really thinking about maybe who you can let off the hook, or we'll give you two options, or just where you can find joy every day. I think that's the key every day. One thing to find joy or who do you need to let off the hook? And that included yourself. Amen, Omar. That's a good one. That's a good one. What I love about finding joy for, for me and this crew and the world right now, given where we're all at in the, in the world as a global species, um, it can feel sometimes like a betrayal, right? It's like, oh, I'm supposed to be stressed and like worried about the future of the country. You know, and every, there's so many people suffering and fighting for their rights. Like, how could I laugh? You know, like, how dare me sort of thing. And what I think it's important to think about is that when we laugh, our energy, electromagnetic field, I want you to think of it as like flower petals are being showered on the tension of the ley lines of the planet. Like your energy is like sparkles, you know, like soothing, soothing the tensions in our country, in the ley lines of the planet, in relationships. So laughter is medicine. And we all know that deep down. I think we really do. So I'd say, please give yourself permission to find those moments for the benefit of all. So I know Oakley usually does the breathing techniques, but I, I, I would uh, ask if it's all right if I do it today. Absolutely, sir. All right. And is there anything else you want to share? No. Thank you for such a dynamic day today. Mm. So oh, home, Omar needs homework. Ah. Omar needs homework. Okay, I'll, I'll He's the homework check. guy. He, he's got it. <laughs> oh, I've got homework. Trust he's me. Got homework. <laughs> um, so if folks could go ahead and just get settled and find a, a position that's comfortable for you and just take a moment and you can go ahead and either rest your eyes or close them all together. And we're just gonna do a few short breaths. Go ahead and take a deep breath in and release in two three four and release two three four another one two three four and release two three four Go ahead and let your breath continue in natural rhythm. Maybe notice where you feel the breath coming in. It's in your nostrils, your throat, your chest. And feel yourself relax into the breath a little bit more. One of the things that's special about each of these breaths is that we have to let one go in order to receive another one. This is truly giving is receiving. And that this air is all air that we are sharing together. So no matter where we are in the country, we're sharing this air. And if you can, I invite you to actually stretch your hands out to the side as if we were connected, that 
we were reaching out to each other and see if you can feel in your fingertips the energy of the people that we're sharing this time and space with. Feel and accept the energy that people are sending. Send those flowers that Oakley talked about and feel them fluttering down. Another breath in, two, three, four, and release, two, three, four, and feel gratitude and feel pride for this moment. Nagar, let me know how that I Ching goes. I Ching! <laughs> I love the I Ching! <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to try it. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>